Hello and welcome to The Reasons I'm Broke, bringing you the reasons we're broke, ranging from comics, movies, TV, video games, and more. I'm Daniel. And I'm Kelly. One of these weeks, I want to throw the brokeettes off and be like, hello! We'll do the Mrs. Doubtfire <laughs> one. <laughs> they wouldn't even expect hello, it. Hello, dearies! And welcome to The Reasons I'm Broke. <laughs> it's got to be all normal. <laughs> And everyone, anyone that's in high school right now, any bro- broquettes in high school don't even know what I'm talking about. They're like, what's Mrs. Doubtfire? What is that? Only the greatest movie ever. You know Robin Williams? <laughs> Robin, like Batman and Robin? <laughs> no. It was a drive-by fruiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that line. <laughs> so basically the way the format goes is we cover news ranging from comics, movies, TV, video games, and more. And we finish off the show with, well, this time with a couple of shout-outs, but before, after that, our comic books. The comics that we picked up throughout the week, Marvel, DC, and Indie. We're going to jump right into our news, and this actually ties in with something that we talked about last week. Pokemon Art Academy will come to North America this fall through the eShop and through retailers. So last week when we talked about it, there hadn't been any news if it was going to show up over here, and it's definitely finalized that it will. Eshop and physical release, you pretty much said, like, it would have sold no matter what. Oh, yeah. Just because it's Pokemon. You throw Pokemon on it, it's going to sell. And you're right. So they re- they're going to release it on both. Probably 40 bucks. they can get away with, like, a $40 release. I would buy it. Kelly, draw this Waylord. Mm, circle and some lines. Water. <laughs> kind of looks like Buzz Lightyear, but close enough. <laughs> <laughs> so there's going to be 40 lessons in the game they also revealed. Buck a lesson. And every time you keep going, uh, the Pokemon get more and more complex. So by the end of it, you probably draw that key thing. That, <laughs> I don't know what it's called, but it's from the latest generation. You can do the hard ones. I'll do the easy ones like Meryl and Electrode <laughs> and Voltorb. So we'll be picking up Pokemon Art Academy Definitely. for the 3DS coming out this fall. Keeping it with the Nintendo news, you can play Mario Kart 8 early from May 17th and 18th in select GameStop locations. Anyone who has already pre-ordered or pre-orders the game will get a free double-sided poster while supplies last. That's pretty cool. Those shops are going to be packed. Imagine, well, imagine the best buys when they do that Super Smash Mm -hmm. Brothers thing. People are just going to be sitting there camping. Pretty much. (laughs) So Mario Kart 8, I'm going to try to come out to one of those game stops. Usually I'm working on the weekends, but I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully. I still think there's going to be a lot of people there. I would just wait. It's worth it to me to wait. But I work around people all the time. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? It's a Tuesday? Okay, now I'll go grocery shopping. (laughs) We've been out of food for three days. It was the weekend. Wasn't worth it. Still with our video games, some huge improvements are coming from Microsoft. Starting in June, the Game with Gold program will include Xbox One titles. The first couple of offered titles will be Halo Spartan Assault and Max The Curse of Brotherhood. It's very similar to what the PlayStation is doing with their PlayStation Plus program. You get free games through it, which I believe you did on Xbox Live as well, except PlayStation brings them out like every single month and it's usually bigger titles. It's been like Tomb Raider in the past, but Microsoft is actually stepping it up and actually offering some bigger titles like that one right there with the Halo Spartan Assault. That's pretty awesome, and I think these are original titles. Oh, well, good for them. They're finally like, shit, we're losing people. (laughs) (laughs) Xbox Live will offer bigger game discounts. Good for them. If you go on the PlayStation Network, some of these games are 50% off. I know I've gotten a ton of games that way, and now they're going to be matching that too. Didn't we also almost re-get, what was it, Arkham City, just because it was free the other Mm -hmm. day? I'm like, put that on there. (laughs) (laughs) And finally, starting June 9th, this is the one everyone's been waiting for, and our very own Dan called this way back called when. Called it. Microsoft will offer a $400 Xbox One option without the Kinect. I called it. Remember when they Microsoft said that they wouldn't, and I said it on the show too. I was like, they said they wouldn't offer a $400 system, but they will. They're going to offer it. And guess what? They fucking did. So now you, get, you can get the Xbox One at $400, which is the same price as the PlayStation 4, without Connect. Connect is the one that nobody wanted because initially they were afraid of like the camera spying on you or whatever. And it's like <laughs> cameras are always watching you, dude. Just go anywhere. Furbies out in used to watch you, please. Yeah, supposedly, right? <laughs> Those things were creepy. No, for reals. 
They haven't said yet if they're going to offer the Connect by itself for players that later on change their mind, which was a concern for some gamers. Like, what if I get the Xbox One and I decide, you know what, maybe I do want the Connect with my system for the voice command for some of those Connect games. <laughs> the voice command, so you can go Xbox, Xbox mm-hmm. on, Xbox on. <laughs> I said on. <laughs> Our old roommates used to have that. You remember? Yeah, I remember, and he'd always... On! (laughs) On! Xbox, play! (laughs) (laughs) I wish you could reprogram it so you can call it, like, Bat Computer. That'd be awesome. i call it Alfred. Alfred. (laughs) (laughs) You'd always talk to it in your Batman voice, too. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I like how, though, you were saying people bitch that they couldn't not have it with the Kinect, and they release this, and now people are bitching that they're taking away the Kinect. Never happy. That's the thing, though. It'll be available in both options, the $500 option and the $400 option. Choices are always better. I think this is really going to help them with their sales because, I mean, $100, if you look at the Xbox and the PlayStation 4 right now at $400 and $500, if you adjust for inflation, there were some systems that came out like the N64, the original Nintendo, that were over these prices. So this isn't bad considering all the shit that these things do with Netflix, with the internet, the games are more complex than ever. So 500 still wasn't bad, again, adjusting for inflation. I think one of the worst ones was when you adjusted like seven to $800. It was insane. But this isn't bad. $400, $100 goes a long way. That's almost two games that you can get mm-hmm. with those $100 you save. Or you can get like a controller in a game or whatever. So I think this is great news. It's definitely going to help them. Coupled with all of the improvements to Xbox Live, they're even saying now you don't need Xbox Live to watch Netflix. That was one of the biggest things. Like Mm -hmm. on PlayStation, you didn't need PlayStation Plus. Now they're actually taking that away, that restriction, and you're good to go. PlayStation Plus is totally worth it, though. Yeah, I mean, and they're matching that so that Mm -hmm. it makes it worth it. So I think this is great. It's great news for gamers. It's good for them because they're going to have more sales, better business. Everybody wins. On to some TV news, something that I'm excited for, and Dan's pretty excited, too. I saw that twinkle in your eye. (laughs) (laughs) Sailor Moon, uncut and remastered, will start airing every Monday on Hulu starting May 19th. So by the time you're listening to this podcast, it's tomorrow, guys. (laughs) Yeah, basically. This will include all 200 episodes. I'm pretty sure there were never 200 episodes in English. But now we're getting them all in English. And it will be released on DVD and Blu-ray this fall. They're going to offer it in two formats. You could either listen to it in the original Japanese voices with subtitles or an all-new English cast. So either way, you can watch it both ways. They're not doing like the Netflix thing where you can just binge watch the entire season. They're doing like a Hulu thing where you go every Monday, like a real television. And I'm assuming by the time they get to fall, most of the episodes will have been released. Hold on. Let's do some math here. Handy dandy phone. 200 episodes. One new one every Monday. There's 52 weeks. So yeah, it's going to be like four years. (laughs) 3.84 years, assuming they take no breaks. Well, all right. <laughs> I'm going to be an old ass woman by the time, and I'm still going to be there like, oh, tuxedo mask. <laughs> what's going to happen? <laughs> you know what's funny is I don't think I've ever seen an episode of Sailor Moon. How dare you? Get out it of was, my house. It was always on either before or after Dragon Ball Z because they'd have like something for the boys and then something for I think girls. it was on before. I remember when I first started watching it, it came on at like eight in the morning. So I was really tired, but I always used to rush over to my best friend's house and we'd mm-hmm. watch it because she was right next door. So I'd be like, okay, mom, going over there now. Yeah. And I'd watch it. And then I watched it at home one day and mom's like, they have short skirts. You can't watch it anymore. <laughs> but then I'd still go over there and watch it. Well, yeah, you gotta. Of Just course. Like, yeah. So you being the Sailor Moon fan, you're, you're going to watch every single one. Of course. What do you think of them doing it through an online internet like provider like Hulu? Instead of putting it out on television or just straight up releasing them on Blu-ray. I think it's really great because you have the people who really want to watch it who can't afford to buy it all on Blu-ray. Because that's going to be, while it's going to look beautiful, that's going to be really expensive. And then you have the people like us who don't have cable. I'm not paying a hundred bucks a month for cable just so that I could watch a TV show doesn't make sense to me but then you got hulu is what like 15 bucks a month yeah if that so for 15 bucks a month you get to watch one of your favorite tv shows as well as plenty of others i was doing some research apparently they have amazing animes on there and you know shows we've never even heard of but not how i met your mother season nine but you know 
They'll get it on there eventually. Eventually. <laughs> They've got to let it soak in. When, and... when I don't, like, when I, when we're not friends anymore. Because I've, <laughs> I binge watched this show. And I sat at McLaren's with these people for hours. They're my family, Dan. I don't know what that is. And they're just going to fr- the bar. The okay. bar is called McLaren's. Should be called Cheers. Then I'd watch it more. They did a, they did a Cheers thing in one of their episodes. Well, good. They, they opened their own bar called Puzzles, and they made up a theme song that was pretty much Cheers. You know why it was called Puzzles? Why is that? You don't know. That's why it's a puzzle. <laughs> All right. So, uh, continuing with the TV news, this will actually tie in our comic book news as well. A couple of shows, I think DC, Warner Brothers, whoever's in charge of doing putting out these TV shows, is really knocking it out of the park. They got Arrow, which from that spun off one of these shows that we're going to talk about. But first, this one, it's bigger news for you than anything. It, Not I Sailor Moon I so just, much. I don't think you're... Constantine just, you, trailer. You don't know me at all. <laughs> Constantine is airing this fall on NBC. So we saw the show. It was a pretty lengthy trailer, probably about three minutes long. Yeah, it was three minutes too long. What'd you think about it? I just... It should burn. It should... Man, do I have to be honest? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it looked better than the next one we're going to talk about. Oh, wow. I did. Okay. Um, I think for where s- TV viewers are right now, with you have big shows like Supernatural and Doctor Who, and that's really what people are into. And they did a good job of marketing, t- you know, to that. <sighs> I didn't think he was horrible. So it's better than the comic book version Much of Constantine. Much better. But I haven't really... Maybe he's a total dick in this show, too. I was kind of trolling on Twitter with the Read Pile. <laughs> That's the other... It's a video podcast on YouTube. If you search The Read Pile with uh, Rick Sussman and L, They do comic book reviews. You can check them out. Other news with that later on today. But <laughs> <laughs> I was joking. I was kind of trolling. I was like, where's Keanu Reeves? None of these guys look like Keanu Reeves. That's not Constantine. What's going on? But yeah, the trailer looked great. It was kind of like a horror TV show. The special effects looked kind of cheap, but I mean, what studio would actually fund this, like, actually give them a bigger budget? Especially a character like Constantine. It's not Batman. Right. The Flash, you would want to give a bigger budget than this, especially especially since it ties into Arrow. But I think it looked like a lot of fun. I think I'm going to watch a couple of episodes, if not the whole season. I will too, but I won't like it. Or you can like it and then pretend to be like most of the people that just watch the comic book movies. Be like, and I the... always liked him. Yeah, mm. <laughs> I always liked Constantine. Just like Snape. I knew he was good. From... That's one of my favorite things ever. I showed you that before, right? Yeah, where they're like... They show every movie and the person's reaction to Snape. And through like all six movies, they're like, I hate him. He's terrible. Mm, he's definitely the bad guy. And by the seventh, they're going, I always liked him. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be me with Constantine. Uh, overall, I thought it looked like, yeah, it did look like a lot of fun. I think it's definitely going to get some views, even for people who don't really know the Constantine character, just because of the type of show that it is. I mentioned that earlier, the Flash trailer, Mm -hmm. it was, uh, they released an extended one later. It was about five minutes long. It was basically the pilot in commercial. (laughs) Pretty much. Like, I knew exactly what the first season was going to (laughs) be. He gets struck by lightning with all the chemicals, just like the comic book, or that old TV show from the 90s with the Flash. I think it was Mm -hmm. 90s, if not late 80s. Pretty sure it was 90s. And they show how he gets his costume. They show how he tests out his powers and what he looks like, what it feels like to him. They show the main villain for that first little arc of episodes. He controls weather and he's evil because he drives by the main character in his (laughs) car staring "Mm." like, "Mm." And he robs banks. And the Flash runs around. I like the costume. I think it looks great in motion. I think the costume looks great. I remember you had originally said that the leather didn't really look that good on it. Mm-hmm. No, I think it looks good. I mean, you know, camera tricks. I, we haven't really watched an episode, and you didn't get to see him that much in costume. You saw more of the cop side that he's working on. But no, I thought the costume looked really good. The special effects were really nice, too, mm-hmm. when he's running, and you see, like, all the car windows, like, blow up and shatter. Yeah. Those were really cool effects, and I hope that that's what The Flash is sort of like when they do the Justice League movie eventually mm-hmm. in, at the earliest 2018. Ugh, we're going to be so old. We are. Um, overall, though, I was kind of disappointed with this trailer. I I felt it was... I don't know. How do you describe it? <laughs> the best part was the part with Arrow. Not because we like Arrow, but because he swung away like Spider-Man. Yes. <laughs> and it looked really silly. Uh, no, but he said... No, Arrow said some weird thing. There were a lot of little things that bothered me. Arrow said, you weren't... Or, 
what was it like that lightning striking you wasn't random that lightning bolt chose you i'm like (laughs) because you care i'm like what are you talking about there are just a bunch of little things like that that i'd be like errol's an idiot (laughs) that's what i would say if i were the flash you have little charles xavier and his little wheelchair protected from the flash flying away and everybody falls over but not xavier Someone on Twitter said that Godzilla caused the Flash. Like, as he was going by, the lightning struck him. Like, ah! <laughs> That'd be a great origin. That would be great. I I don't know. This It doesn't feel like it's going to be as deep as I want it to be. It feels like Constantine's going to be deeper. Yeah. Because he's paired up with this girl, and she now has sort of his power. She can see what he sees. And that sounds well, more interesting. Well, her powers are awakening, where she can see the dead. And once you see the dead, the dead can see you. And Constantine's trying to and, save his soul the whole time. And the devil's in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those special effects were terrible. <laughs> like when the devil's like... <laughs> <laughs> so two new shows coming this year, different channels. Mm-hmm. But with that, we can move on to some comic book news and then the big one for this episode, number 88. Userama.com put up the Futures End 3D covers, which are coming out later this year. Uh, some of them are pretty cool. Some of them are pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> So they kind of updated the covers in which they change when you go at a certain angle. Whereas before it's just a 3D cover and you kind of see like whatever, like whatever's flying at you. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you said some of these look terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's like, uh, who was the question? <laughs> was it the question? Uh, no. Yeah. You're who t- is you're the guy? Of Constantine that was like thrusting forward <laughs> with funny. the David Poe bulge. The, that's not who I'm thinking about. The first one that we saw it wasn't the question. It was the ghost man. You know Phantom what? Stranger. Yes. And then he's like, Phantom Stranger. And then you flip it and he's like screaming in the woods as a normal <laughs> man. That was weird. And then Superman gets turned into stone. <laughs> dust. I told you, he's dust in the wind. What was the joke you had made with that, though? <laughs> Without Batman, he's dust in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> for Batman, he... I like the one where he's with the Riddler. Mm-hmm. It was for Detective Comics. It shows Batman and the Riddler on a rooftop like a dynamic duo, normally where Robin would be. And then you switch the thing, and I guess he's gone, or it could be the reverse news realm, but didn't really make it that clear as to which is the future version of it, or right. the future's end. But in all of them, Batman's okay. Well, yeah. In all of these. Batman's awesome. In one, he has, like, a Batman army. <laughs> that was pretty cool. If you read Future's End number zero, Batman is still alive and well, and he's fighting the Future's End, whatever is happening. So while the rest of the superheroes are, are being, like, stopped or killed or arrested or whatever batman's the only one that's like improved like well, he yeah. has the riddler or now he has an army of batman like he's the he's, only one ahead of everyone he's batman dan please uh the funny the other it's one i thought futures was end at batman's hands yes. is what it should be called um i thought grayson was really funny that one was terrible because it's it's he just changes costume mm-hmm. <laughs> same pose but here he's in the u.s and then over here, he's in Russia. But he looks exactly the same, so... Can they retitle it Grace and Red Sun? That'd be awesome. Done. So Grace and Red Sun, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Robin, Red Sun. We're going to pick up a bunch of these. They haven't revealed Sinestro's cover yet. Although by That's the time this episode... That's you're waiting for. Yeah. He's but... like naked, and then he gets more naked. <laughs> oh, we didn't go in the Constantine one, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the first thing I thought is... Is he trying to seduce me? (laughs) Because he's got his hands up in the air and this weird little smile. And like you said, a David Bowie bulge. (laughs) I'm like, really? Forget what he turns into. He just has like a mask and Oh, you know, he has the Dr. Fate mask. That's right. That's what he puts on. I would like to see that Sinestro one though. That'd be good. What, where he's naked and then more (laughs) naked? How do you ever do a... More naked. Maybe it's like a Fabio cover where it's it's suddenly me like on the other thing, like being (laughs) carried. Like (laughs) Maybe... It's Naked Sinestro, and then you flip in it's Naked Sinestro with Fabio hair and a rose in his mouth. I agree with this. Would you be okay with that one? Yeah, I mean, I'm picking. we're picking it up anyway. Well, yeah. So hopefully it's something that cool. <laughs> Even if it was Parkas Sinestro, then you flip it and he got more Parkas. More what? <laughs> more Parkas. <laughs> Why is he wearing Parkas? He's getting less naked, Dan. Oh, okay. Come on. <laughs> <sighs> I think uh, last month's villains ones were a lot cooler. Granted, we haven't seen these in person to actually take a look at them and how they transform. Maybe the 3D effect is better this time around, but so far with these concepts, I'm not that impressed, and some of the art is actually kind of shitty, like the Grayson one. Ugh. Ugh. Gail Simone's? (laughs) We do have to talk about Gail Simone's. (laughs) So, in the one, it's Batgirl with, who was there? Freeze and Penguin. Yeah, like they're... 
It was the Mr. Freeze and Penguin, and they're, like, tied up. Like, she put yes. them away. And then you flip it, and what happens, Dan? Batgirl, I guess, or a female Bane is, like, on top of... She's just in the background, and then there's, like, three new Batgirls. Woman power. So Gail Simone's like, now there's four women. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't just have one. <laughs> Batgirl, a brighter future. Gail Simone. <laughs> Should just be called Batgirl, women power. Why That's not? It. She throws Sonya in there. Red Sonya, the movement, mm -hmm. Batgirl, and Tomb Raider. There we go. Done. But the biggest news, this is what blew up all over Twitter, Facebook, anywhere, any media site that you had. And work. I spread it around work. Anyone that worked, yeah, if you're at work, if someone at work talked about it, I mm -hmm. guarantee you, the Superman versus Batman Batmobile and Batsuit was revealed. Woo! Zack Snyder, the day before, showed just the tail end of the Batmobile with a tarp on top of it and said, maybe we'll remove the tarp tomorrow. Not only did they show the Batmobile, but they showed what Ben Affleck, Batfleck, will be wearing yes. in Superman vs. Batman. So cool. Coming out in 2016. We've got a bunch of replies from Broquettes on Facebook and Twitter, but first let's go ahead and cover what we thought about it because there's so much to talk about with that Batsuit. I, okay, so when we initially saw it, it was that real dark one. And right. I was a little worried because it looked like there were veins all over him. But then they did the high res picture. Did you post that one up? I did. Okay. Um, and I'm in love with it. I think it's great. I love the fat bat symbol. Yeah. I love, I'm hoping it's, you know, grays on grays because I think that would be great. Mm -hmm. I love his little short ears. Uh, I think it's a sexy suit. I don't know. I really like it. It's a great Batman suit. The short horns on him. It's the Frank Miller thing. Mm -hmm. Also, Jim Lee did the same thing with the New 52. The big fat bat symbol is from The Dark Knight Returns. Really awesome. But you also get those lines that you were saying that we initially thought were veins. They're actually the New 52 Jim Lee design on the bat suit. If you look at any Batman comic book today, you see Batman in it in the current run. You're going to see that he has design lines going down the chest, down the arms, and down the legs. That's what's on the suit along with Frank Miller's big bat symbol and the cowl. It's awesome. It's like an amalgam of the two designs, mm -hmm. the Jim Lee one and the Frank Miller design. They haven't really revealed the colors yet because it is a black and white image. Really interesting. Some people want the dark blue and gray, kind of like the Neil Adams run and all that. Other people like yourself want it to be black and gray or gray on gray. I think either way, it's going to look great. This is still the closest we've ever gotten to the comic book look. Mm -hmm. And that was quoted on IGN.com when I tweeted it. If you go on the IGN.com, find that article. It's got a bunch of replies. We're under the people that liked the design. It's that tweet. That's awesome. Good for us. And if you don't follow us on Twitter, I'll tell you right now, at Reasons I'm Broke, you can see that high-res picture along with more pictures for a lot of the stuff we talk about today. Mm -hmm. uh, overall, I did think it was a great suit, though. I like, now, not saying anything bad about, against Chris Nolan, because I do, I love those movies. They were great. Mm -hmm. But, you know, his was armor. And this, I feel like, is a suit. Something that Batman could actually move in and fight in. More so than the other one. If you guys take a moment and, like, pause the podcast, go on YouTube.com. Unless you're driving. <laughs> unless you're driving, yeah, then <laughs> you can't really do this. But if you search Batman Dead End, it's a short film made years ago where Batman fights some predators. But in that one, he's wearing, like, a cloth costume also, not the armor thing. If they can do that little short film on the small budget and make the costume look that cool, something like this mm -hmm. is going to look amazing. And even if you look at like in the, on the bat like picture, right near the armpit, you see the folds from the clothing. So it really is like a cloth material. That's it's awesome. not an armor thing. And I understand the armor thing with the Nolan films because they were trying to go for a realistic Batman. And yeah, and realistic, you know, you want protection from bullets, knives, whatever. Dogs. Dogs or. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one, it's just muscle mm -hmm. and then the batman and the batmobile on the just cow. bat glares those bullets mm. <laughs> what'd you think of the so okay so the eyes weren't white like i kind of thought they would based on what kevin smith said but he was more i think referring to like the bat logo and mm -hmm. it being frank miller's suit because he never thought we'd actually see that in live action what do you think about the batmobile i didn't i was not paying attention to the batmobile <laughs> <laughs> uh what i remember of it i thought it was cool i'm i'm not Animated series will always be my Batmobile, but that would never be in a movie. It would never work in a movie. It could never turn. Yeah, the only closest thing to that was the Tim Burton Batmobile because they were kind of inspired by that when they were creating theirs. Mm -hmm. 
And in that one, he did, they did have like that hook that wrapped around the pole that helped them turn. Yeah. So it's like they would need that too. But I think it's a cool Batmobile. I do want to still see a whole, a whole shot of it mm-hmm. from front to back. Like we saw the back of it and then we saw the the later half of it. But we haven't seen the front yet. So we don't really know what the front looks like. Hopefully it has the grill like the animated series. Yeah. That we would have little bits and pieces from every Batmobile. Because it's got the big wheels like the tumbler. It's got the back of it that sort of looks like the Batman and Robin Batmobile from the New 52. Mm-hmm. And hopefully the front kind of looks like the animated series. Like That'd that be would great. be amazing. One final thing about the suit. What do you think about that texture that's on it? If you remember Man of Steel, Superman had that same type of thing. I think if you looked really closely, there were like little S's as a little design. Hmm. But Batman has like a texture to the entire suit. I think it's really cool. It adds, it breaks up the costume because if it was just a solid piece, it wouldn't be as interesting. Uh, It would be cool to see, because for example, okay, Superman's suit is obviously alien technology. Because Superman's dad gave it to him. Yeah, how that's he just knew how he his, wears. Yeah. Whatever. But it would be interesting if they tied it in somehow, like, Batman kind of recreated that because it is more resistant or something like that. Because that's totally something Batman would do. Superman wouldn't even know that he got a sample of his clothing. Mm-hmm. And Batman could totally make a suit off of that. Not right. that they'll do that, but I just think it'd be really cool. I think, I like it too. I think it represents, like, the rugged, older Batman that they're going for. Mm-hmm. Because it does look more damaged, and it does look, like, aged a little bit. And I think it fits with what Ben Affleck's going to do with the character. An older Batman, a rugged one, an experienced one, that's not going to take shit from the Boy Scout Superman. Yep. So overall, on the internet, many people did, and I called it also. Remember, I did all... I'm, like, on fire with this. (laughs) It all just kind of worked out with this episode. But I also called that everyone would do a complete, like... Oh, I love Ben Affleck as Batman. Like, that's amazing. Like, everyone's suddenly like, oh, I can see it now. I can see him as Batman. It's like, I fucking told you guys. And to be fair, we still have to see him in action. We still have to see a trailer. Before we get into the comments, I was talking about this at work. And I had one guy, best policy I've ever heard. Amazing. So we were talking about it. I was like, it looks really cool. He's like, eh, might be okay. I was like, what are you talking about? It looks great. And did you not see Argo? He's like, yeah, I saw Argo. Ben Affleck did a great job. I'm like, so you're not, you know, you're not excited for this? You don't think it'll be good? He goes, here's my thing. If I think it's going to be a shit movie, when I see it and it's great, it's going to be awesome. If I start saying it's going to be great and it's just an okay movie, it's that much worse. So good for him. I approve. Yeah, it's true. Keep your expectations low and be surprised when it turns out to be awesome. I still think he's going to do a good job. Yeah, I'm still, uh, I think the marketable side of it looks great. Mm-hmm. So you can throw that up on a poster and you're going to make money. They're fine. But yeah, let's, let's, I'm still, let's wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> but I am very, very happy that the bat suit looks amazing. Mm-hmm. So with that, we can move on to the comments from the Broquettes. Starting off with Twitter, at Geek Omnivore. I just love that they are recasting Ben as Catman. Hashtag Catflick. Because <laughs> of his little ears. It does kind of look like Catman a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. So that was a funny one. Next we have at Deckland, Kenny82, who says, Suit looks weird and veiny, but the Batmobile looks all right. The problem with Batman is you really can't do much with the suit. He didn't see the high res picture. <laughs> well, I did reply and I told him that we thought initially they were veins, but they're actually the new 52 lines on them and some of them are actually the folds for the character and i remember you did say that initially was it looked mm-hmm. a little veiny but yeah you look closer and they're just designed at irish on fire 31 quote his suit's made up of paper mache and dead parents ears <laughs> <laughs> you really like that one <laughs> i did not pre-read these at all. <laughs> Mache and dead parents tears. <laughs> there goes my eyeliner great. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as good as Hulk Agents of Smash. <laughs> okay, I'm good. Just don't read it again. <laughs> that was just a gift of a tweet, <laughs> is what that was. Again, that was from at Irish on Fire 31. Who I want to thank as well for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic book that he sent us. 
Recently, at a free comic book day location right near his area, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird were there signing. I guess he was saying that it had been a long time before the two had been together doing a signing. And he was awesome. He he knew he knows how much we like TMNT. Uh, me, Donatello, you, Michelangelo. And it's signed by both of them. Mm-hmm. And he sent it to us. And lots of thanks. Thank you so much. At Irish on Fire 31, Christopher, really great. And to answer you about the crossover with the read pile all i gotta say is there are actually plans already in motion and we thought it was really funny that you mentioned that because it almost seemed like a natural crossover and it will happen and it'll be bigger than you actually think awesome next we have at evangelist Green. nailed it absolutely nailed it any lingering doubts i had about batfleck are gone now for a lot of people that's all they needed they needed mm-hmm. to see him in the costume he's right they absolutely nailed it one point i do want to make is that no matter how perfect this costume would have been which for a lot of people this is perfection this is batman in real life there would still be some people out there that wouldn't like it. no matter how perfect of a costume it is there'll still be like people bitching about it in oh, some yeah. form the biggest thing is a lot of people don't like the ears i love it i mm-hmm. like the short horns i think it's a great change they're taking chances while still remaining loyal to the batman at dark knight drew said no words just tears. The barren tears. <laughs> <laughs> you and that paper mache one. <laughs> okay, I'm composed. I'm good. I'm good. So still from Twitter. And finally we have at Mac to Murder. Looks good to me as well. I like the small ears ones best. They do, Agreed. they look great. Mm-hmm. I think I think the suit's gonna look great when it moves. He's got lots of muscles now. <laughs> good for him he's got to master that bat glare exactly and two comments two broquettes from facebook first one's from david who said i love the short ears mm-hmm. and our last one is from brian who says haters gonna hate lol <laughs> <laughs> seriously though it's the michael keaton syndrome all over again look at his utility belt it looks like it could actually hold gear it's just comic book blocky enough yeah, the belt is in the Nolan ones, they were just kind of like designs mm-hmm. where he kept like smoke bombs, smaller things. But here they are huge, big, big utility belt. And like you said, it looks like he could actually maybe hold batterings in there or Chicken multiple. Chicken soup? <laughs> that, what episode was that again? It was a uh, cold. No, it was um, Heart of Ice. Heart of Ice. I'm, I'm thinking of the fucking DLC from Arkham Origins, uh, Cold, Cold no, Heart. Oh, Dan, it's only like your favorite episode. Heart of Ice. We had the chicken soup somewhere. Somewhere his behind. Belt, giant maybe there's ass. a pocket in his cape. I don't understand. I'm just going to say he learned that trick from Zatanna because that's the only thing that makes <laughs> sense. I can't just say, oh, it's just a cartoon. Like, fuck it. And that is actually going to do it for our news this week. Thank you, everyone who responded to our questions. I and hope you enjoyed the shout outs as well. Mm-hmm. And with that, we're going to jump into our comics. First up, we have our indie books. The Accelerators, number six of six, written by Ronnie Porto with art by Gavin Smith. This is finally the last one. (laughs) Right, finally the last one. It came out, what, every like two months? Sometimes three months? Yeah. Um, It had a good premise. I see what they were trying to do with the end, and they left it open-ended if, you know, maybe it becomes a cult classic and people pick it up and love it and they decide to continue it later, which I did like that they kind of left it that way. But... They were trying to do so much with six issues, and I don't feel like they paced it well enough. By the end of it, you have your group that they're going to be using for later on when they continue the series. The random Spartan. Like, they got the Amanda Waller-ish character in there. Mm -hmm. You got your main characters from the very beginning of the show, the scientist. And the 80s kid. The 80s kid as well. But the main action for this one is a giant T-Rex that gets brought from the past mm-hmm. and is in the middle of this gladiator thing, just killing people and all. It's it's It was a really cool scene. But overall, I would say this would be actually my pass of the week. Mine as well. I had a problem because I'm like, don't they realize by now that T-Rexes were scavengers? They weren't going around attacking people. May have had feathers. We don't know. Yeah. But, you know, I guess it's just that stereotype of the t-rex i don't even i I don't even know if that's the correct word t-rexes are more badass if they're just munching on people i will give them that yeah but bookends they jump into the future and 80s kid from the future we'll call him emotion lord 80s kid jumps back and he's like well now you could just you're gonna do crazy things and keep jumping to the future and they're like what and then they keep jumping to the future and that's where it ends um amanda waller and 
the general are back together now randomly. Yeah. When they just hated each other. It's like relationships do not repair that quickly, guys. Right. But whatevs. Okay. And there's a Spartan who came out of left field. I, I actually like the Spartan. The Spartan's cool, but he came out of left field. He did. And he's just like, he's their friend now, but he's also like kind of a badass and he doesn't really know what they're saying, but he's still helping them. I like that. I, there's always got to be that character mm-hmm. in the group. Just a strong, quiet type, sort of. Oh, and then you have the weird android guy, too. Yeah, who just helped also. Yeah. Everything just kind of... It was a very, like, quick rush ending, I guess I would say. So, you're right. It Probably pacing was the biggest problem with the book. But we still... We love Blue Juice Comics. We know a lot of those guys personally. When we see them at the conventions and everything, they Mm -hmm. remember us. And we're still... We picked up all six of the issues, and we're going to pick up all of Anne Bonnie as well. well, Because that's me as a pirate. You as a pirate. We love the first issue. I still need to find that shirt she's wearing and take a picture dressed up as her. Be badass. Tweet it, and then go to Megacon with it at the table. Yes. And Bonnie, right in front of you. Done. (laughs) Next indie book is one we've been waiting for and one that we supported the Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. Bee and Puppy Cat number one. Written by Natasha Allegri, also drawn by Natasha Allegri. The other writer is Garrett Jackson, and the second artist for the backup story is Zach Gorman. I think I'm going to have to go with this one as my pick of the week. Pick of the week, Bee and Puppy Cat number yes, one. Yes, it was adorable. It tied in with the show. It was really funny. Uh, Puppy Cat is just pissed off through the whole thing. Um, He's sad that he's too short, so he's going to go buy stilettos. (laughs) (laughs) But some great humor, great setup. I think even if you hadn't watched the cartoon, you could jump in on this and not feel behind or like you missed anything. I'm going to say the opposite. For anyone that I've sold the book to, being Puppy Cat number one, I have told them I highly recommend you watch the YouTube show before you read this. Because otherwise you won't understand why they have the job of going back and forth between the two dimensions, who Puppy Cat is. I think a lot of that is not really explained in the number one. I think it helps if you watch the show, but I still think, I don't know, maybe I'm just smarter than everybody else. But you don't, you've also seen the show. Like, if you had just read this, like, who knows what you would have thought That's of the book. True. So if you haven't, if you do pick up being Puppy Cat number one, absolutely go on YouTube. Even if you don't, I love the short. If you're a fan of Adventure Time or The Bravest Warriors, which it's all done by Cartoon Hangover, watch the Bee and Puppy Cat short. It's all in one video now. Ten minutes. Ten minutes out of your life. It's very funny. If you like Sailor Moon, too, which kind of ties into that. There's a lot of references to that. It's great. It's great for both boys and girls, action, romance, story, everything. Mm -hmm. Great animation. Very fun book. Not my pick of the week, but I did really enjoy it. Next is Lumberjanes, number two, written by Grace Ellis and Noelle Stevenson, with art by Brooke Allen and Noelle Stevenson. You really like the first issue. I think the first one was more of a setup to the whole story, mm-hmm. and this was them actually on an adventure. I really like this one, too. It's cool for me because we had this random sea monster, and the last one we had the weird-ass foxes. This one we have a sea monster and a three-eyed eagle. Yeah. And we don't really understand completely why this is happening, but nobody seems to think it's out of the ordinary. They're just like, oh, time to fight him. I like the camaraderie they built between the girls in this one. Little love story in there, too. It looks like it, Did yeah. you catch that? That was there. So I think this is still turning out to be a pretty strong comic. A lot of character development, a lot of closeness with the characters, which is what I like to see. I will say I like number two way more. Mm-hmm. Number one, I was kind of like iffy on. And we kind of stuck with it because you really enjoyed it. And number two is more of what I felt it should have been. Because you have your adventure, you have your character development all within that adventure and the action. And that's kind of what a good comic book does. I also like that at the very end of the, at the very back of the book, if you guys bought the Lumberjanes issue, they actually add the badges that they earned throughout the story. And it's all in the back. It says the Lumberjanes title and it's got the different badges. Mm -hmm. You had a joke that it kind of looks like Batman with a Jester hat. (laughs) It's Jester hat Batman. It looks exactly like him. Not kinda. Yeah, the book's $3.99. The great pickup. Definitely better than number one. I enjoyed it. You enjoyed it. Mm Mm-hmm. On to our DC books. We didn't have any Marvel books this week, but our DC book, we're going to kick it off with Batgirl number 31, written by Gail Simone, art by Fernando Passerin, Jonathan Glapion, and Alex Garner. This one was spooky. The ragdoll's creepy. Ragdoll is a previous character, though, that Gail Simone really used a lot, I think, in Secret Six, and he's back for Batgirl. And he's creepy. I don't like him. Even by the end of it, you didn't like him? 
kind of liked him, but he was creepy. <laughs> He's like, I can climb on things and walk backwards like a spider. Basically, the ragdoll is hired to kill Batgirl's friends. Batgirl defends him. And then you kind of see that there's a bigger plot to this, mm -hmm. that maybe Ragdoll wasn't completely in the wrong. It's a great story because there is that conflict, but the conflict kind of makes you be like, well, I don't know if Ragdoll was really wrong in what he did. And I liked Ragdoll. I hadn't read too much of Ragdoll before this. Right. I think he's a fun character. And you can tell that Gail Simone had a lot of fun writing him. Mm hmm I agree. He is a fun character, but he's creepy. He's going to give me nightmares. <laughs> like, I'm not... What was that movie years ago? We're in the trailer. I never saw the trail, uh, the movie. But in the trailer, there's like a creepy upside down, crab walking, creepy thing yeah. <laughs> in the stairs. Whenever I come home at night and flip off that light to walk up the stairs, I always think that thing's behind me. I don't know why. So now I'm just going to see Ragdoll behind child. me. You're a child. I get scared in the dark by myself. You are a child. I'm sorry. One day it's going to be there and I'm prepared. One of my friends, when we had, he had seen that trailer too, we were all together. Right after the trailer ended, he was like, hmm, not scary. He said it just like that. And one of my friends, Clayton, he like imagined him, like if he ever encountered that backwards eye thing, he would just say, not scary, like slap it out of the <laughs> way and continue down the stairs. <laughs> so that's immediately what I thought of. When I would said pee that. myself and run away. If you said not scary and slapped it, you know that thing would be bewildered. Like, what the fuck? Like, it wouldn't attack you right away. <laughs> like, that, she's confident as hell. Like, maybe, I, maybe I'm not scary. Well, I would just die. If I were ever in that situation where things were trying to kill me like that, I'd be like, just, this is not worth the psychological stuff that I'm going to need for the rest of my life. Just end it now. But background number 31 was actually my, is my pick of the week. It was very good. I can agree with that. Like you said, it does lead to something bigger. We find out that the good guys maybe aren't the good guys. Mm -hmm. And the bad guys are probably still the bad guys. But It's a jumping on point for the Batgirl series. It's the first part of this new story. So if you're looking to jump into Batgirl have, or are a fan of Gail Simone's Red Sonja or Tomb Raider, the movement before it was canceled, jump into Batgirl number 31. Very fun book, especially with Ragdoll. Woman power. <laughs> and woman power. <laughs> Next, we have Justice League United, number one. This one's written by Jeff Lemire, with art by Mike McCone. Let me just say also, for Justice League United, number one, if you go to your local comic book shop, if they ordered enough copies, you will see a variant on the shelf with the alternative title, which was the original Justice League Canada. It's got a red cover, same characters, but it does have a title change of Justice League Canada. Kind of a fun little thing. I don't know. I, I thought it was neat that they Justice released League it. Justice League Canada in space. In space. That's right. That's the title. To That's this. the title, Dan. I thought this was a really fun story. I think we're still setting up for the bigger plot that they hinted at in the first one, but we get to see a pretty cool monster. Yeah, there's a cool monster in here. The fight between Lobo and Hawkman I thought was pretty entertaining mm -hmm. because there's history between the two characters. Romantic Some... history? <laughs> there's no romance. I don't know what they had set up before this, but I guess Hawkman had hunted down Lobo's people, and he, he was kind of like, well, this is why we killed pieces of shit like you. And as they're fighting, Hawkman's arm actually gets r cut off Chopped by off, Lobo. Yeah. I'm like, holy shit, I didn't think Hawkman would get bested by Lobo, but apparently he did. Later on in the story, you see the Justice League start to work together, this new Justice League. If you haven't been reading it, it's made up of Animal Man, Stargirl, Adam Strange, Green Arrow, Martian Manhunter, and a brand new character, a new superhero. I thought it was funny how Adam Strange got his costume. <laughs> he like fell over and he's like, oh, here's a costume. Do, 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 fits perfect. And he runs out, yeah, a little rocket pack. Mm -hmm. It's a very fun book. Like, it's a much lighter Justice League. And I think it's it's something that, especially after the Forever, Forever Evil stuff, we kind of needed. Right. Something fun, something light, and with characters that are as colorful, if not more, than the Justice League. Um, Animal Man and Green Arrow still have their little, little fights, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. By the end of it, they show you what the villains are actually working towards and how the Justice League United is connected to all of this. So another, I would say you can jump onto this even if you didn't pick up number zero mm -hmm. because it explains pretty well why they're doing what they are. Final book is a weekly, so we're going to be talking about this one for <laughs> God knows how many episodes, but New 52 Futures End number two, written by Jeff Lemire, Brian Azzarello, Dan Jurgens, and Keith Giffen with art by Dan Green, Jesus Marino, and Ryan Sook. I liked this one, but I want to see more Batman. I agree. There wasn't enough Batman Beyond in this, and mm -hmm. that's the main reason we're picking this up, just mm -hmm. to see how Batman Beyond fixes it. It doesn't really happen a lot here. You do see some really good interaction between Alfred and Terry, mm -hmm. and I thought that was really fun. I did like also that they emphasized the fact that 
Batman Beyond is not a detective. And you in the show, you don't really see him do a lot of detective work. Right. And he even admits it. He tells Alfred, I'm not a detective. I'm just here to fix this and fight. And Alfred says, we'll have to work on that. Mm-hmm. I think that's great. I want to see Batman and Beyond grow into the Batman as, as best the Batman as he could be with everything he has and all the tools. I thought the memorial for Green Arrow was great with Animal Man on there right. and saying the things that he did and having just read Justice League United and seeing, you know, this is where they're going to go. This is amazing. Uh, very sad. What's his name did point out though, like, yeah, they probably all shouldn't be in one place, but whatever yeah you do see who the villain is to all of this mr terrific and you kind of see the seeds being planted on why he's going to suddenly start doing whatever he is whatever it is that leads to this batman beyond the future Mm -hmm. where everyone's like a robot alien hybrid thing but for this one at the funeral you see firestorm fighting it out with arsenal because he's blaming him still for the green arrow death and it's like all of you get over this shit (laughs) kind of is his fault though well and then firestorm (laughs) has to go and be a little baby about it like punch him and then run off yeah. Well, and he's going to be like, I was doing emergency things. Like, yeah, you were sticking it in some lady. That was an emergency. And then his <laughs> friend is like, you have to release me so that I can make all this right. And he's like, no, you're trapped in me forever. And then he flew away. So now we have... Whiny Firestorm. I guess. <laughs> I think the other important thing that we should take away from this book, other than the Batman Beyond part, is that there is a hooded Superman. Like, a uh, Superman with, like, a helmet. Mm-hmm. But we don't really know what's going on with that. What happened in the fa- five years... Is that Clark Kent? Is that someone completely different? So I think there's like a mystery to all of this. Batman broke his heart one too many times. (laughs) And and what? Would he just hit his face forever or what? He like, he's like, no, and just started like crashing into things. Like, you know, when babies get angry and they start running into walls. Yeah. That's what he did. But it was with like asteroids or something. (laughs) I think it might tie into the doom thing that's Mm -hmm. currently going on, but we're not reading Superman. So it'll probably unfold as we continue with the future's end. As it'll lead up to the big event, the 3D covers, in September. Yep. So overall, not as good of an issue as number one. But it was mainly to cover the Green Arrow funeral and how everyone was reacting to it. Mm -hmm. And that will actually do it for us for our comics this week. Just to reiterate, my pick of the week was Bee and Puppy Cat number one. And mine was Batgirl number 31. And both of our passes were the Accelerators number six. Go ahead and follow us on Twitter if you haven't already. Twitter.com slash Reasons I'm Broke or if you just search at Reasons I'm Broke will pop up. Follow us on there. Let us know what made you broke this week. And if you want to still share your thoughts about Batman suit or the Batmobile, we'll definitely share it on the podcast. If you guys listen to us through iTunes, please leave a comment and a rating. It helps other people find us. If you want to have the podcast on the go, go to the Google Play Store or to the iTunes Store. Search Stitcher. The Stitcher app will let you have any podcast, including ours, on the go. It'll download it ahead of time. If you only have Wi-Fi, it'll download it then too and kind of replace the list and only do the new episodes or keep all of the old ones. If you do have Stitcher, though, please leave us a review on there. Again, it helps people find us and it is one way you can support the show. We also post the podcast on YouTube as well as unboxings. Uh, It's been a while since we've had one, but hopefully we have some more stuff coming out soon. Definitely watch those. Leave a comment and a rating. We try to do a good job of giving you every angle of the things that we unbox. So it helps you get a good idea of what you're looking for. And if you don't have Twitter, find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Reasons I'm Broke. And that'll do it for us this week. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'm Kelly. And I'm Daniel. We'll see you next week.